Well, hey everybody, this is uh, Business Organizations, the virtual lecture. I uh, want to talk to you a little bit about limited partnerships. Uh, the important thing that I want to stress for you is that limited partnerships are a creation of uh, statute. In other words, the legislature came up with this idea and it really is about the limited part which is this part right here, is talking about limited liability, okay? So what you're really looking at here is there's a try to way of a way to insulate the partners from liability of the business. So if the business, if they have somebody that slips and falls, or if one member of the partnership or the business does something wrong, then basically what they're trying to say that the other uh, partners would not necessarily be liable unless they had foreknowledge of what was being done that was being done wrong. Now let me say this to you is that when this first came out people were all excited about it but quite frankly it is passing out of fad, it's no longer being used that much, it's uh, probably not going to be around much longer the reason being is if you go to all the effort to create a limited partnership, you might as well create a limited liability corporation, which we're going to talk about later. So this is more informational. I'm not going to really stress this too much. Uh, even if you see some questions on it and so forth on quizzes and that, I wouldn't really look for those later on um, uh, because they really they are not that significant in the way the world works today in the law business, okay? So just keep that in mind, is this what we mean by limited partnership is limited liability, okay? So the word limited has a very narrow meaning. Now, a uh, limited partner is a member of a limited partnership, and really what they are is, more than anything, the limited partner is the money man, okay? So the limited partner, we'll call him the LP, is the money man, okay? Well, there's an operations type partner, and he is what we call the GP, okay? The general partner, okay? So the limited liability partnership has these parts to it. And so he's in charge of operations, which I always put the word ops there, okay? So this, all they do is they put in money, they don't show up every day, they don't work, they don't really have control of what's going on day to day. The general partner actually does all the operating. He is in charge of the day to day. He may put in less money. Uh, a, a lot of times the way this comes up is people are uh, basically, uh, may, younger guy wants to start his business but he doesn't have any money. Another guy wants to get involved but doesn't want to get so formal as to go into a corporation. Uh, and so uh, basically what we're looking at is that this might be the younger guy that's got all the vitality, ready to start something new from the ground up. And these guys are the more experienced guys, or maybe half a dozen of them or whatever, they each kick in, let's say, like $10,000. And then what he's got to do is get this off the ground. Uh, some of the things that you see is really in what we're doing right now is you get into some of these businesses that are involved in the internet, that are involved in computing, things like that, then that is what, what we're looking at. Well, we talked before about these model laws and, and uh, uniform laws, and what we mean by uniform law is that a large number of states agree. So what we're looking at in this one is R U L. P A, Rulpa, Rulpa, okay. So this is uh, basically uh, revised uniform limited partnership. So revised uniform limited partnership. Okay, I'm not going to spell it all the way. You can figure that part out. I try to keep everything in a small space so I can make sure that you guys can see it. So I'll step out of the frame a little bit and make sure that you can take notes that if you want to. Now one thing is that this model has been passed by all the states 
except Louisiana, okay? All but Louisiana, so I'm going to put all but LA, meaning Louisiana, not Los Angeles, okay? The A's got a period, but the L doesn't, okay? So all states, now how did this happen? Well, these states come together. They get the attorney generals to come in there. They get some representative from every state that's a legal representative of that state with some power to commit. And then they hammer this out. And they, one guy starts with a proposal, usually from a major university or somewhere. They talk about the problem. They get together in these uh, commissions. Uh, and they're not obligated, as you can see, since Louisiana didn't do it. Uh, because, uh, you know, after it's all said and done, the legislature still has to vote for it. So if they get a strong majority, uh, they'll send this out and a lot of people will sign on to it. And some of these model acts, which we call um, um, different, you know, like, um, um, you know, uniform. When we say the word uniform, so we have like the Uniform Commercial Code, Uniform Commercial Code, that's a real good one. There's another one called the UCCC, which is a consumer code, uniform uh, consumer code. So basically, there's a number of these that they've gotten together over and they try to work it out and say, we're gonna all, because some of these things, they work across state lines. So if someone's got a business in Indiana and it happens to open up, uh, let's say that they're down in like Lawrenceburg, Indiana, and they wanna open one up over in Cincinnati. Uh, then uh, basically what you're getting into is, uh, you know, you got to be able to work in two different states and, and obey their laws. Well, in order to make it better for the citizens to move back and forth across state lines and do business, they're like, why don't we have the same laws so that any form they fill out in Indiana can be accepted in Ohio? So that's a lot of what we mean by uniform. The uniform is uniform among the states, okay? Now the federal government doesn't have anything in this, okay? So that's really an important part, okay? So remember, all states have adopted ROLPA except Louisiana. Now like I said too though, it's kind of passe, it's kind of passing out of existence, because hardly anybody uses it anymore. Well, the advantages of limited partnerships is that they attract capital. Like I said, you can have older guys that are saying, I'd still like to have a hand in some business, like let's say a lawn care business or something, but I want to be able to travel wherever I want to go. Uh, winners in Arizona, winners in Florida, uh, you know, winners in France, I don't know, wherever they want to go, you know. So basically, they can put the money in and hopefully they'll get a check sometime in the future that's uh, kind of an agreed share of profits, if there's any profits. Well, it has limited liability, but only for the limited partners. The general partner assumes all liability for the acts of the corporation. Now, the only way that you can set this limited partnership aside is if the guy went to the limited partners and asked them for their advice, and they said, sure, go ahead and do it, you know. And then later found out, oh my gosh, that wasn't even legal. We couldn't even do that. So um, other things like that, somebody slips and falls outside the building, most likely that's going to fall on the general partners, not the limited partners, okay? The other thing is that you can transfer the limited partnership interest uh, easily, much like shares of stock. Well, you know, it's starting to sound more and more like a corporation, you know. The other thing is there's continuity of existence. So what that means is if someone even dies, their share of the limited partnership can be passed on to somebody, just like in a corporation, okay? The biggest reason why people like partnerships is the pass-through taxation. So basically what ends up happening is it's a little bit more streamlined in terms of the taxes. The IRS taxes the members. So if there's a profit, then the members have to pay the taxes. Now, one thing I will tell you though, is these Schedule C corporations now uh, are also, and this has been this way for a long time, they can also pass through the profits. Uh, and once again, remember, and this is kind of a tricky question on the last quiz, any partnership, they have to file what's called an, an informational um, 
tax return. So basically what they've got to do is say, okay, partnership filed the informational, now what do we mean by informational tax return? Well, what they're saying is they've got to show here's what the business did this year. Okay. Well, then the partners filed their tax returns. Well, those two have to match up. So in other words, if they show, hey, we sent the partner a check for $10,000 and he submits his and it doesn't show that he made $10,000 off this partnership, then he's in deep doo-doo, okay? So limited partner fails to show a profit on his tax return, limited partnership sends in an informational, that doesn't mean the partnership's going to owe taxes. It's just that they're going to inform the IRS of what went on with this partnership last year. So that's what you get into if it's problematic. Uh, okay, one of the problems is that if they see in a limited partnership that the uh, general partner is not doing what he promised to do, it's difficult for the limited partners to take control of the partnership. That's different in a um, uh, corporation because the stockholders can file what we call a stockholders derivative lawsuit and uh, board members or stockholders or board members and stockholders can oust the people that are operating the business much more easily than they can in these limited partnerships. So once again that's a big disadvantage one of the reasons why they've kind of lost favor. Uh, also there is unlimited liability for the general partner so all you know, all of the um, uh, basically birds are kind of come home to roost, you know, on his nest and not uh, anybody else's, which here again, sometimes you don't really know what went on because if it's like an oral discussion or whatever, one guy says one thing, another guy says another, general partner says, well, these limited partners told me to do it, uh, but yet they can't get sued for it, you know, so unless you can really prove it through letters, emails, things like that, a uh, whole new issue. Uh, formalities. I mean, basically, you've got the same formalities for a limited partnership as you do for a corporation. So these are important considerations. A lot of people, like I said, hey, if we're going to form something this complex, let's just form a corporation, okay? Okay, well, uh, key features of a limited partnership. You have to have at least one general partner and one limited partner. Okay, so that can be like Silent Bob in the background, nobody knows he even exists. But between the partners, they need to have everything written down so we can keep track. And then also they have to do these other things I've already mentioned, like tax returns and stuff like that. Uh, basically, um, the general partner, just like the general partner in a general partnership, the only difference is a general partnership, usually both partners or three partners or whoever are all general partners, okay, and they all have equal say. Whereas in this one, on the day-to-day -day operations, the general partner has most to say, but he also takes the responsibility. So he has the rights and the responsibility uh, of an owner, but yet on the other hand, if he makes any money, he has to share it, um, unlike some of these other things. So. Uh, limited partners do not have personal liability for obligations of the limited partnership as long as they didn't manage the business. So if they change their character as a limited partner and step in and the, and the general partner says, well, I'd like you to help me with this because I can't figure it out, and they come in and lend their expertise and say, you need to do it this way like I've been telling you, if they get involved in the daily direction of that business, then their title changes and they become a general partner whether they, if they know that or not. So their li liability is limited to the amount of investment in the enterprise if they do not get involved in the day-to-day -day operations. Uh, one of the things is that you have to file in Indiana a uh, certifi certificate, get, let me get it together here, certificate of limited partnership with the Secretary of State. So it is important that when you form limited partnerships, you uh, notify the state of your intentions. Uh, and then uh, basically limited partners can sell their interest freely. They don't have to ask for permission from other partners. Uh, limited partners agreement may be oral or written, but if there's no agreement on profits, then it's allocated based on their contribution. 
So if they put in 30% of the money, they're going to get 30% of the profits, for example. If they put in, you know, like 80% of the money, then unless they have a separate written agreement with the general partner, they get 80% of the profits. Usually the general partner is going to get a set amount of money before you even start talking about profits. Okay, so this is, can get a little bit complicated. You want to take your time and read over this material and try to understand the differences between a limited liability partnership. I'm not going to bother you too much on this, but when we get into uh, limited liability corporations, uh, that's where, you know, shoes are going to drop because you need to really understand those because that really is uh, pretty much all the rage now. People think that they're going to be somehow protected. Um, and so one of the things that we, you know, you've got to watch is that, you know, basically, uh, I don't care what you call it, corporation's a corporation, if a partnership is a partnership, but there are things where it's kind of starting to merge a little bit. So um, it's one of those where you have to be pretty careful about which form you want to select in terms of how you want to develop uh, the business. Quite frankly, there's a lot more boilerplate type uh, forms and so forth out there for the corporations than there are for partnerships because for many years, centuries, partnerships have operated basically on a handshake, like I said. Now we've come into a type of partnership where you got to file something with a state and that's a little bit unusual. Well, remember through, uh, uh, before the pass-through portion of this on the taxation, like I said, but also remember that there's always a uh, informational return that you have to file. The other thing is, uh, after uh, 2001, the limited partners could manage the limited partnership without liability, but that, that's basically been changed. Uh, and so, um, that it, you know, as you become more involved in the operation, then you lose your shield. Okay, so very important, keep, uh, keep an eye on this, but uh, I wouldn't get too excited about it. Okay, so like I say, I think it's probably going to be a relic of the past, so when you're old like me, you can say, I remember when they had limited partnerships, you know, so. All right, well, hey, basically that's going to be it for today. Uh, I want to make another uh, parting comment to you, and that is that people have said, oh, I see that I didn't do this right, or, you know, uh, you know, my work isn't good on some of these different things. You can always resubmit things. And now, one thing, you've got to be a little bit patient with me, because I'm trying to teach quite a few classes uh, a little bit under the gun this semester, but uh, I will work my way back to it, and I'll go back over it. Before I ever put a final grade on a form, uh, I will double check uh, double check and triple check everybody and if you see something in the grade book that you don't you've ever got a question about it uh, don't feel bad about getting a hold of me I'll get to it I try to get to my emails a couple times a day so uh, you know I hope we're developing a relationship here now that you understand that um, you know I really do care about you I want you to do well that's why I'm trying to do these extra things like these video lectures to try to aid you along your way. Uh, but don't get worked up if you look on here and you say, well, I've only got 200 points. Well, there's people in your class that only have 80 points. You know, uh, it's early in the class. You know, don't worry about it. You just got to work through making sure we understand each other about what the expectations are. If I say, no, this is still not what I'm looking for, always, always feel free to send it back to me and I'll, I'll re-check your grade and regrade it for you. Uh, so what I'm really trying to do is make you a good paralegal. Grades will come naturally. Uh, and so I'm not here with the harsh pencil where I'm going to mark everything all up and say, you're just out of luck. I don't see it that way. Our learning is about learning. It's not about numbers on a paper as far as a grade and so forth. I'm trying to get you to learn what you need to know to survive in the legal community. Okay, so that's what we're basically working on. Uh, I'm, in, I'm on your side, I wanna help you uh, to a certain extent, but there is still some academic rigor, like I said. Uh, these APA rules and different things like that, we've just gotta get everything up to snuff so that I know that if any judge looked at this, they would say, oh man, this person's a real professional. That's what I'm trying to do for you.
Okay. So uh, don't, you know, let your heart be troubled. You know, I'll, I'll stick with you and you stick with me and we'll get through all this together. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next time. Thank you.